Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Dharna Noor, joining you from Baltimore. The second presidential debate took place on Sunday night, and in it, moderators Anderson Cooper and Martha Raddatz questioned Trump about the audio that was leaked in which he describes sexually assaulting women to radio host and TV host Billy Bush. Let's take a listen. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. Did the debate really tackle gender inequality and violence against women head on? Now joining us to discuss this is Liza Featherstone. Liza is a journalist based in New York City and a contributing editor to The Nation, where she also writes the advice column, Asking for a Friend. She's the editor of False Choices, The Faux Feminism of Hillary Rodden Clinton. Thanks for joining us today, Liza. Thanks so much. Uh, so I want to begin just by getting sort of your initial response to the audio that was released that we just heard um, and his response to Anderson Cooper's question about his remarks. Uh, let's take a listen to the clip from the debate. You describe kissing women without consent, grabbing their genitals. That is sexual assault. You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it, but this is locker room talk. You know, when we have a world where you have ISIS chopping off heads, where you have, and frankly, drowning people in steel cages, where you have wars and, and horrible, horrible sights all over, where you have so many bad things happening. This is like medieval times. We haven't seen anything like this, the carnage all over the world. And they look and they see. Can you imagine the people that are frankly doing so well against us with ISIS? And they look at our country and they see what's going on. Yes, I'm very embarrassed by it. I hate it. But it's locker room talk, and it's one of those things. Is Trump right to say that people should uh, be focusing on the crimes of ISIS instead of his remarks? Uh, he's essentially saying that his remarks pale in comparison to ISIS's crimes. I mean, it's actually kind of funny if you think about it. I mean, he's on tape being... Um, bragging about um, really violent and disgusting behavior and his defense is, I'm not ISIS. I mean, am I right? I'm not ISIS. I mean, that's just, that is really, um, that is really ridiculous and, uh, um, and a low bar. I mean, uh, like, obviously, ISIS are an appalling um, gang of violent misogynists also, but ISIS is not running for president of the United States. <laughs> you know, it's just not a reasonable comparison. Uh, Trump also made the claim that Bill Clinton was more abusive to women than any other politician, and uh, he also said that Hillary Clinton was essentially complicit in his infidelity. Let's take a listen to that. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it, but Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously, four of them here tonight. I will tell you that when Hillary brings up a point like that and she talks about words that I said 11 years ago, I think it's disgraceful, and I think she should be ashamed of herself, if you want to know the truth. Is it fair to say that uh, all this about Hillary Clinton, Trump essentially is indicating that these comments and the attitude behind them aren't unique to him? Uh, is that just further normalizing what's often called rape culture, or is that a fair way of looking at it? Um, well, there's a couple things to say about that. First of all, in the history of our country, I mean, the history of our country is that many of the many of our presidents were slaveholders. So, actually, um, yes, a lot of them were just as much um, rapists as um, Donald Trump and perhaps Bill Clinton. Uh, I mean, so that's not a very informed comment on his part. But you know, um, leaving that aside, and it's a big aside. Um, he, you know, he may be right about Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton has been accused um, of raping women and um, and also of serious harassment against women, and um, and and those those charges may well um, be be true. Um, and um, and so, you know, but it's 
really a non sequitur for Donald Trump to be bringing it up at this point because Bill Clinton, um, like ISIS, is not running for president of the United States. Hillary Clinton is running for president of the United States. Um, so it's really, um, it's, and, and, and also, it's it's a sort of further non-defense because how does he know this? He knows this because he says he and Bill Clinton have engaged in this kind of talk um, on the golf course together. Well, that's really attractive. Not only are you um, a rapist bragging about raping women, but you're hanging out in the golf course with your buddies who are doing the same thing. You know, I mean, it it really is not um, it really is not much of a defense, um, nor much of a distraction from his own actions. And what do you make of his remarks there about Hillary Clinton, um, essentially saying that she was complicit in these uh, vile acts by Bill Clinton? You know, there I think Donald Trump makes a good point. Um, you know, th there are some charges um, by these women. Um, Juanita Butterick is one, um, saying that um, that um, Hillary Clinton, um, you know, um, threatened them or told them that they had better be quiet, put pressure on them to um, to not bring these charges um, against her husband. Um, and you know, if if those things are true, those are very serious charges against a woman who has been running um, as a feminist um, for president. Um, I've always thought that those charges were were troubling and serious. Um, there are many things that we actually um, know about that. Um, the um, we we know that she um, has played a role in. Um, in trying to um, smear the reputations of women who have accused um, Bill Clinton um, of, of sexual offenses like this. So those charges are certainly serious, um, and Donald Trump is um, very reasonable um, and to bring them up. Um, however, um, again, they, um, while serious and troubling, especially in someone purporting to be um, a feminist politician, um, they are um, they actually don't rise to the level of the behavior that Trump is bragging about on this tape, um, which um, r really um, is a violent crime. And if he did these things, he should be in prison. Um, so Anderson Cooper did ask uh, Donald Trump this question about uh, his the audio that was released where he essentially claims that he was yeah. engaging in sexual assault, but no other questions of gender inequality were really addressed. Um, there was nothing yeah. about equal pay or uh, safe abortions. Both candidates did sort of say that they're the candidate for all oppressed groups, and Clinton actually did mention that um, a feat of the Affordable Care Act is the fact that women can't be charged more for health care than men. Um, but mm -hmm. was there a missed opportunity here to talk about violence against women in a more broad way rather than just about how disgusting Trump is? Yeah, I, I think there was a missed opportunity on that. And, and I think that, um, um, I, I, I think that um, you know, um, Hillary Clinton really could have come out and said, um, look, you know, not only, by electing me, you would not only be um, voting against um, a rapist, but you would also be electing somebody who um, fought for women, and then she could promise she could say what she was um, going to do to um, advance um, women's lives. I and mean, she has, um, during the campaign, at times talked about paid family leave. She has talked about repealing the Hyde Amendment. A little awkward now that she has Tim Kaine on her ticket, who is a supporter of the Hyde Amendment. Um, but you know that kind of that level of hypocrisy is just what we have come to expect. Um, and um, and but she could have talked um, about um, um, she 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 could have talked about. Um, raising the minimum wage, as again she has um, at, at times referred to during the campaign, she could have really put this um, in one big agenda and said, "Look, you know, um, here's Donald Trump on the one hand, um, like um, uh, threatening to, like talking about raping women and now laughing it off and dismissing it as locker room talk, um, or you could uh, you could elect." the first woman of the United States who takes all these issues very seriously, and she could have talked in detail about the issues. I mean, I don't know why she didn't do that, um, except that um, she, um, she really has been so positioning herself as a conservative candidate, um, you know, in an attempt to woo Republicans, 
um, that I think she's really um, kind of painted herself into a corner and it's made it um, actually um, difficult for her to respond to these things in a principled and feminist way. I, I think, by the way, that that positioning of herself as a conservative candidate um, is authentic. I don't think it's necessarily um, purely political on her part, um, but it does deprive her of the um, of, of the ability to really um, come at swinging on this, I think. Uh, and you've been really critical of Hillary Clinton um, in your career for years. Yeah. Um, so I want to sort of pose another critique um, of her that we've heard often. Um, Jill Stein often says that when Trump, uh, that while Trump says despicable things, Hillary Clinton has a track record of actually doing terrible things. Yeah. Uh, and you yourself, that Hillary Clinton, um, during her term as Secretary of State, there were more cases of femicide and rape in Libya and Iraq, uh, countries which the U.S. invaded. Is this assessment uh, that Trump says scary things, but Clinton's actually done scary things, a fair one? Um, I do, and I think it's it's analogous to um, my friend Rania Kalik makes um, the journalist makes a similar point about you know Trump says awful things about um, about Muslims, um, and Hillary Clinton has actually done terrible things to Muslims and killed and been responsible for many Muslim deaths through her foreign policy, and you know which is worse, and and I think that that's, um, and I think that you could certainly you can certainly make a similar argument um, on. Um, on women's issues that, yeah, Trump is a pig. He says these awful things. Um, but um, but Hillary Clinton has been, um, res um, has a lot of responsibility for um, welfare reform, which under um, her husband um, threw a lot of poor women into even deeper poverty in the United States. Um, and then, um, and on the other hand, the Secretary of State was um, very bellicose, very hawkish, and is responsible for, bears responsibility um, for a lot of, um, women's death in, deaths in um, and rape, by the way, in um, in um, Iraq, um, Libya, um, and um, and elsewhere, Honduras as well. Um, so I think that that is absolutely a fair argument. On the other hand, let's not dismiss um, the real world um, effects of a Republican um, presidency, which would also um, be horrible for women. Um, Donald Trump is not going to just talk um, if he's president, he's going to be making policy. And do you want somebody um, making policy who views women in that way? And, um, and let's um, look a little bit, um, let's not forget his um, running mate, Pence, um, who has also um, been responsible for very, um, um, very horrific anti-abortion politics um, policies um, in um, as as governor of Indiana, um, and um, and is um, would would I assume have an extremely um, right wing um, and um, anti woman um, approach um, in and in a in a Trump Pence um, presidency. So I wouldn't quite. Um, I mean, obviously, if it were a choice between like nasty words and nasty policies, you'd pick nasty policies, but I'm not sure it's really a choice. I don't think the policies under Trump would be um, so harmless. Um, and Clinton has recently taken a number of more progressive positions than she did in the 2008 election, for instance. Uh, she's mm -hmm. come out in support of single-payer health care. Uh, she called her support of the Iraq war a mistake. She said she's not supporting the TPP anymore. Um, but should we believe that she'll actually take up these new progressive positions if she's elected, or is this all just rhetoric? So I think we should be very skeptical of those claims. Um, I mean, I think that um, that a politician's record of the things that they have actually done um, is a much better guide um, to um, what that person is going to be like as president than um, the claims that she makes um, in order to get elected, um, especially because she um, has really backed off a lot of that progressive um, um, rhetoric um, ever since the convention, ever since she um, secured the nomination beat back the Sanders challenge, um, she, um, she has really, um, her rhetoric um, has been um, very much um, more centrist and even, um, and even to the right um, at, at times. So um, I, no, I wouldn't believe her. I would be very skeptical of that. Um, that said, I think it's still, um, I mean, I think that, that progressive forces should um, be 
um, happy that um, that we made a show, a show of power in pressuring her um, through the Bernie campaign and through campaigns like the Fight for 15. Um, but I, I think it's it's by no means um, it's 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 by it's by no means um, guaranteed or even all that likely that she will actually champion any of those issues. I think that um, that people are going to have to. Um, continue fighting um, for for those things, um, and um, and most likely, um, she will be um, a pretty conservative president. Um, and that said, Trump has called to do things like defund Planned Parenthood. Uh, Clinton wouldn't do that. He would cut the EPA. Um, he would increase the military budget. Um, so I guess I'm wondering, Liza, in January, during the primaries, you penned this piece in The Nation called Why the Socialist Femi Feminist is Not Voting for Hillary. Uh, mm -hmm. And in it, that you, you kind of argued that Hillary Clinton's elite feminism doesn't really involve the kind of uh, redistributive economics that would allow women to live better lives. Um, so would you still write this article now? Are you still not voting for Hillary Clinton? And would you vote for her if you lived in a swing state? Um, yeah, you know, and th that's a good question. I mean, the, that that piece was written um, that piece was written in the primary, um, and and it was a response to the fact that there um, was a um, democratic, a self-described democratic socialist uh, running against Hillary in the primary, and I I thought that um, that his agenda was far more meaningfully. Um, feminist um, than um, than hers, um, as was his entire record of accomplishments over his career. Um, I I don't think that there's really um, ever a candidate in a general election for a socialist feminist to vote for, um, except for um, sometimes the Green Party candidate or those sort of um, you know sometimes there are a few like um, you know fourth or fifth party socialists that are on on, on the on the ballot as well um so the, the that that particular piece isn't really um it's it's not really intended for a general election i, I would never discourage anybody who is in a swing state for voting for hillary clinton against donald trump um i, I myself don't live in a swing state and i do plan to vote for jill stein the green party candidate despite reservations so. Liza Featherstone, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.